Good afternoon, everyone. Before I start, I first thank Surf for inviting me here today uh, and to be a part among such wonderful people, uh, Pulela, Twinkle, uh, and a lot of uh, crew members of Surf. And, and I absolutely like the concept because uh, uh, when Twinkle was speaking, uh, she said the, uh, her mother should have kept a different name for her, but when she spoke about children and she, when she spoke about how to uh, uh, make things going and, and about the kite, I could see the twinkle in her eyes. So, uh, so you know, this concept, this concept about children and, and, and kids and how to handle failure and success is, is, is a marvelous concept because, you know, when you grow as a father, when you grow up, uh, you know, I've been a kid one day, I've been in a team sport, and now I have a beautiful young girl at home who's 15, and I see her go, go through all this, uh, what I did when I was, uh, when I was young. Uh, you know, my experiences in success and failure in life is a bit different from, from Gopi. I was hearing Gopi speak about, about various aspects of, of, of sport and how to educate and, and, and how to individually become better uh, rather than think about winning or losing. But we came from a completely different, uh, f different form of sport and a completely different, uh, different structure. We, we lived in an environment of team sport. We lived in an environment where uh, it was about the team and it was about the success of the team. Along with your individual brilliance, uh, you had to make sure that you fit into a team atmosphere and create an environment of, of winning and losing. I don't know how it was for how it was for uh, for Gopi, who was who's who's the second, who was the second person after after Prakash Padukone to win the All England uh, in those days, which was I thought a remarkable remarkable achievement. Uh, but uh, in cricket, uh, uh, it was completely different for us. I I was hearing Mandira speak about the 1990 uh, tour about of Australia. You know, I was a 17 year old kid who was picked on the trip to Australia from nowhere. I still remember my mother, my mother and father coming to drop me in Delhi, and and most of my teammates uh, fell off the chair laughing when they saw my mom and dad uh, at the hotel and seeing me off. He said, "You know, you are in the big boys' league, and 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 I see your mom and dad coming to drop you off at the airport." I said, "Yeah, I know typical Bengali family how moms are and dads are, how moms are and dads are, and and and, and that's the way it is. Don't look into it. Just keep looking at my cricket." So as I always keep talking about that 1992 trip uh, in Australia when we went because a lot of my skills and, and a lot of my cricket and a lot of my uh, work during my tenure as captain uh, came out of experiences of that trip in 1992. Uh, we all learn in life, we all learn with experiences uh, as, as Dr. Harish Shetty was saying that it's not always about the books. It's about experiences and it's about how you handle situations makes you actually a better person, a better individual, or a better athlete in life. I remember the 1992 trip of, of Australia when I was just 17 year old and I, and I landed in that tour to Australia. In those days, touring Australia was very, very tough. You know, it was, it was supposed to be the hardest place to play the game. It, is still, it still is, but it was a lot harder those days uh, in the early 90s. And I remember the first day when I landed in Perth in 1992. In those days, flights and travel was not as comfortable as, as they are now. You know, there are business class lounges, you know, you get well looked after. Uh, you only had to be on an Air India flight to get to Australia around the world and that too in economy. So as we landed, as we landed in, in Australia in Perth and it was a long flight, I was a bit jet lagged being in the southern hemisphere in, in that part of the world. And I just come out of my room and was walking around in the lobby for a breath of fresh air. It was about 6, 6.30 in the evening. As I was going through that, you know, one of my colleagues and one of my teammates walked up to me and said, what are you doing for dinner? Uh, and I was, I was absolutely starstruck at that time, you know, 17 year old, uh, watching some of the stalwarts play the game uh, on television right throughout my young age. My dad, my dad was a part of the cricket world and he always wanted, to me, wanted me to play the game. My mother, on the other hand, wanted me to study. It's, just, it's a family where, where you know, two different personalities want their children to do two different things. So as I, as I was on the walk that, after, that evening for dinner, uh, I, I vividly remember that I hardly spoke anything. 
you know it was an evening for me to listen an evening for me to uh, you know just find a way to uh, not to say no to that person because he was such a such a towering personality um, i just had to accept his offer as the dinner went on and i'll keep it short as the dinner went on and we were discussing about the trip to australia how quick the pitches are and how tough the aussies are and how it will be hard for india for the next 4 months a quiet word which i remembered it came out that evening after dinner i said that i should not have been on the trip i did not know how to react i did not know what to say and and i just listened uh, he said you know australia is such a difficult difficult place to tour and and uh, it's it's not easy for any young player it's always easier to make a debut in your own country and then travel to these hard places to play cricket obviously the evening finished and and i was in a hurry to finish that evening because uh because uh, i did not want to hear anything more because i knew i had to pass four months of tough cricket in this part of the world so the tour finished as 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 they were saying 1992 i came back after the series uh, four months hardly played anything not even four games i just played one game on the tour uh, of australia and and that too against against the likes of curtly ambrose and cotney walsh and ian bishop who were when i stood i actually reached their waistline that's how tall they were the typical west indians i came back from the tour and didn't play international cricket for for four ma- for four years but the best part of the trip of those four years was that was it taught me how to become a better cricketer you know we all live in a world of success we all live in a world of failures it's 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 hand in hand you know it's very easy in life to say that you know we'll try Uh, we'll give everything we have uh, but it doesn't matter whether we succeed or we fail it doesn't work that way yes to an extent it does but uh, in a world uh, where you want to succeed where you want to make a name for yourself where you want to where you want to be called as a successful person in whatever profession you do success means a lot success means something and it's very important it's very important in any professional world is to find a way to succeed because when you find a way to succeed you find a way to handle failure as well you know as as a young boy as a young girl when you when you teach your children when you teach your boys and girls how to how to handle life how to grow and how to do different things amidst the freedom amidst the amidst the uh, op- opportunity of allowing them to do what they want it's it's very very important to make them understand that that listen this is the way you also you need to go forward we support you uh we we let you do what you want you know i see a distinct change in my six, 15 16 year old girl uh every year you know when she was young her likings um, how her uh, dressing style her uh, her options in life and i see that change every year and i see the mom at home who who's so rigid on the daughter that you have to study you have to be this you have to be that you have to make sure you go to your dance school because the mother is a is a is a classical dancer and and the daughter wouldn't do that so it's all it's it's about it's about teaching the children it's about teaching your boy and your or your girl to how to handle life how to handle different different aspects of life which is so very very important you know when i when i came back in 1996 when i came back in 1996 and went on to play for uh 3 or 4 years before i became captain uh you know a lot of my leadership skills and captaincy skills uh, emerged from that period as a player and even that 1992 trip and i'll keep it short because uh, we have a, a, a discussion after this uh, over the years and over the period of of various ways of trying to build a team build a team under pressure and under different situations um the few 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 important things which i learned was very very important one was was identifying the right talent it's about who you identified uh, once you identify the right talent it's about allowing them to express uh, all of us in this room and all of us in professions when we grow up whether in school when then we go on to get bigger jobs uh, some go on to play badminton like pulela some become an actress like twinkle some become a cricketer like like me you know all of us have this fear of failure that what happens if we fail and all of us want to succeed all of us want to create a name for ourselves and i think as a leader as an individual when you when you when you help your children grow up 
when you are in 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 a leadership situation in a team you know look at look at uh, pulela for the instance you know he manages some of the best badminton players in the world at the moment whether it's saina nehwal whether it's uh, the boys champion uh, whether it's pv sindhu uh, you know there are different personalities uh, there are different personalities who want to succeed there are different personalities who with the badminton racket want to be the best in the world and he's delivered for them you know he's a coach i know he's he can he can only work to a certain distance at the end of the day it's about the individuals and the players who who actually go and fight it out in the court it's the same for cricket it's the same for cricket it doesn't change but there are certain skills which are very important when you're in a leadership position uh, to to make sure you make your children or your players understand and it was it was in my case to take the fear of failure away from individuals now, as i said when you identified the talent you make sure you identify the best talent that's always judgmental that's always that always depends on 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 your own judges on your own judgment or the selectors you deal with but the biggest thing to succeed or the biggest avenue of success was that when a virender sehwag or a yuvraj singh or a or a rahul dravid went out to bat they did not worry about what the selectors spoke about them what the media spoke about them or what the captain thought about them it was all about that red ball and about scoring runs you know once you create that atmosphere of of taking the fear of failure away from an individual you allow him to succeed or you give him more chances of success success because every individual is different every individual has different sets of talent every individual has has got different mindset but it's it's about allowing every individual to express in their own manner for them to succeed i believed in in man management skills in a team environment because i've lived all my life in a team environment i had rahul dravid at at one stage uh, at as one member of the team who was so meticulous you know he would he would even decide what breakfast he would eat before the test match you know if the night before he was my vice captain for a long period of time you know the night before if you would have asked rahul dravid uh the jam we used to call him jam because his father used to work in the kisan jams in bangalore kisan jam company uh, and i believe priya knows that so we used to call him jam and i would ask him rahul uh, the bus leaves at 7:45 in the morning uh, what would you do he would say listen i would come i'll first take the juice then the apple then the tea and then the egg and at 7:44 i'll be right on the bus and he exactly did that that was what for rahul dravid and then you had yuvraj singh on the other hand when you woke up in the morning you walk past his door you make sure you knocked it to make sure that he was up and ready for the test match next morning so you had two different personalities in a same team and 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 for the team to succeed and and for the team to do well and for you as a leader to do well you have to handle each of them individually and separately you did not expect a dravid to to behave as a yuvraj did or you did not expect a yuvraj singh to behave as a rahul dravid did but each and every individual had its own skills and had its own pluses and minuses for your team to succeed <clears throat> i I'll, i'll i'll tell you an incident when we talk about success and failure because all of us fail in life the best the best players in the world fail uh, you know the best uh, the best film stars have 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 poor uh, hits once in a while uh, they may not have the best performance in a cinema or the cinema doesn't do well Uh, but in in your in your endeavor to succeed and in your endeavor to uh, to push your children or you to push your colleagues to do well it is very important to support them at the right time especially when they are down you know i'll give you an example of of anil kumble who was probably the biggest biggest match winner india has ever produced in the last 20 25 years you know we spoke about sachin uh, we we speak about ravi chandra nashwan who's gone to the fastest 300 wickets as young virat kohli at this stage one of the most prolific players in world cricket you must have seen for a long long time but you know here was one anil kumble who i think probably has won more cricket matches uh, than anybody in indian cricket i still remember uh, attending a selection committee meeting before the tour of australia before the tour of australia in 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 2003 Uh, i was captain of the side and and i knew that the selectors were not very keen on having anil in that tour i remember beating new zealand in the semi final in 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 hyderabad and then going that night to pick the team in 
in, in, the, in the hotel. It was about 11, 11.30 in the night because the day-night match had just finished and we had to announce the team that night. As I entered the selection meeting, as I entered the selection meeting, I could sense that the selectors had made up their mind to leave Anil Kumble out. As I entered the meeting, I, I spoke to my coach, John Wright, who was probably the most nervous character you'll ever meet. Um, and he was, in his, he was in his shorts and T-shirt, one of the dirtiest T-shirts you must have ever seen for a long, long time, because probably that was his superstition to wear the same T-shirt every game because India was winning. So as I entered the team meeting and I realized that the selectors won't pick Anil, I kept on requesting, I kept on insisting that he's such a match winner, he's done so much, so much good stuff for Indian cricket, he sh must be on that tour to Australia. He said, the selectors just didn't agree. He said, no, we must pick a left-arm spinner because uh, you know, the Australians don't play left-arm spin well. And this went on for a good couple of, couple of hours. It was getting late till when John came up to me and said, sort of, let's, let's finish this, we'll go with what they say and I'm sure we'll do well. I took John apart and I said, John, he's been a champion for the last 10 years. No, his graph, his slide is, has only been up for India. And, and, it, and he's on his way down at the moment, maybe because I, uh, he hasn't bowled well for a period of time. And I, I actually feel it is, it is a temporary thing. I went and told him that, John, if you, if you leave Anil out of this tour, he may not play for India again. So it's important that we take him with us to Australia. The meeting went on and, and I said, I'm not going to sign the selection sheet till Anil's in the side. So the selectors actually got fed up with me. They got fed up with me and said, sort of, if, if, if you don't play well, if the team doesn't play well and Anil Kumble doesn't play well, you'll be the first person to go before anyone goes. I said, fine, I'm ready to take that risk and we'll see what happens. We went on to Australia and Anil had an outstanding series, not just an outstanding series, but an outstanding year as well. He went on to pick 80 wickets that year, which was the most ever by any spinner in a calendar year in the history of Test cricket. The reason I say this uh, is, is because that when champions uh, or when successful people who had so much of successes over a period of time go through such situations, it's very important as leaders. And I say leaders in this case because when your children grow up, when your uh, when your family grows up, uh, your, your job is as a father or a mother, but in a team environment, your job is as a leader. So when you're down and when, you're, when, you're, when your best performer over a period of time has, has not done well, it's important to support him. It's important to support him because, because in, in, in your endeavor to support and in your journey to support, you actually reinvent the best of that particular individual. I'll give you one more example of my life. You know, I was captain of India till 2006, 2007, when I was asked to leave as captain and, and continue as a player. Actually, I wasn't even picked as a player. Uh, when, in 2007, when, when, when Greg Chappell came into the Indian scene and, and he believed that I'd, I was not good enough to captain anymore, and then I lost my place in the national side for six, 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 six months. You know, I was a grown-up boy then, I was 34, 35, I was not, not a young boy uh, at that stage, I was quite independent and grown-up. My father, my father who was obsessed with the game like all fathers are, you know, we cricketers had families where our parents were obsessed with the game. I used to see Rahul Dravid's father uh, quietly come to Bangalore to watch test cricket. So I asked him one day, uh, I was captain and I asked him, uncle, why do you come so quietly and sit at the back of one of the stands and watch Rahul play? He said, you know, every time there's a test match which happens in Bangalore, Rahul Dravid make, makes sure that he tells me that I don't turn up on the cricket field. And I asked him, why? Why does he say that? He said, every time he saw my face at uh, somewhere in the stands and if I'm seeing, sitting in a VIP stand, he felt the pressure. So to watch my son play, I would actually sneak in into a membership gate and sit right at the back and watch my son play for the country because that's what I lived for and that's what I dreamt for all my life. So it's the same thing with my dad. My dad was obsessed with the game and all he knew during my growing up period was about, about me playing for the country. So when I got left out during that period and I was sitting one Sunday morning, I was sitting one Sunday morning with him and, and he came up to me and said, you know, you've played so much of cricket, you've played almost 350 games for India. Uh, it doesn't matter even if you don't want to play, don't get to play one more game. What you've achieved will always remain in the history of, of, of Indian cricket. 
I listened to him uh, that day. I didn't utter a word because because I knew where he was coming from. You know, he was he he would see me, uh, you know, not enjoy that period of my of of my cricketing life because uh, I was I didn't know how to get back into the side because uh, when you realize that you know you're you're not being selected for any any opportunity is not because of your skills, then it becomes a very difficult. Uh, uh, a scenario for you. You know, even if you score runs, you will not be selected. Even if you play well, you will not be selected. So it, it was a it was a very sensitive part of my life. The matter finished that day, and and we and we went off. Uh, he came back to me again three or four days later. He came back to me and said, "Sort of, uh, have you decided what you want to do? Because I don't enjoy waking up in the morning and reading the newspaper with the headlines that with every Indian win." It gets tougher for Ganguly to get back into the side. So I listened to him for a while. And then one fine day, I decided to tell him. I said, listen, I'm 33, 34 years of age. I want to play the game. Uh, I, because in sport, you don't play forever. There's an age, and after that, even if you're good, uh, even if you have been the best in the world, the game goes away from you. So I said, listen, I've got another three or four years of my life. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I want to give it a try. I don't know whether I'm going to play again. Uh, I may not play again. The chances are that I will not play again. But I don't want to sit at the age of 40 when I, even if I want to, because of my age, I can't pick a cricket bat. I don't want to talk to myself that, listen, sorrow when the chips were down and when, when people asked you to leave, you did not make an effort, effort to succeed and come back and, and see whether you were good enough. I went through that phase. I, I came back into that squad uh, after three or four months, and then I went on to play for the next five years. The day when I finished, I had a very dear friend in the side, uh, Sachin. Uh, I don't get to see him much these days because he lives in Bombay. Uh, the day I finished, he said, sort of, uh, this is the best I've seen you play in the last, in your entire career, the last three or four years, was the best I've seen you play. The reason I say this to all of you is that you know, along with success comes failure. You know, failures are sometimes harsh. Uh, failures are sometimes difficult to accept. But sometimes when, <clears throat> when failures come in and you get, and you get uh, thrown away or you get separated or you get pushed away, you know, you realize your best. Uh, we live in a world, we live in a system where, where we, we need an arm around our shoulders, you know, whether it's our parents, whether it's our office colleagues, whether it's our bosses, whether it's our best friends, whether it's our husbands, or whether it's our wives. We need an arm around and say that, listen, no, no, good will happen. But sometimes when all those things go away from you, you actually, you actually discover your best. And, and every time I speak, I say that those three or four years uh, were the best time of my life because I'd realized that the only way I could play the next game was if I scored runs with my bat. So when we, when we uh, bring our children up, when we bring the most dearest people in our lives up, it is important to educate them in, in the right manner. You know, I, I heard the various speakers before me talk about how the kids should be handled, what they want, what they don't want, and uh, you know, the mother behaves differently, the father behaves differently. But we also at the same time need to accept that it's a world which is very, very competitive. It's a world which, where, which teaches you things the hard way. Uh, you've got to be affectionate, you've got to be kind, but you also got to be aware. You've got to be aware of the situation, you've got to be aware of, 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 of the ways to succeed. Because if you don't know how to succeed, uh, you, will not, you will not realize failure. And if you don't realize, if you don't get failures in life, you will not realize the importance of success. I've seen that in my career, and most of you have seen uh, in your, with your experiences in life, that, that one goes along with the other. Uh, one of my best friends asked me one day, that sort of, you finish playing, you do so much things in life, you're probably busier than, than, uh, than, uh, than what you did when you were playing cricket. How does life feel now? I said, you know, it's great. You know, there is, uh, I enjoy what I do. I do so much work. Uh, the finances are not a problem. Uh, but the biggest thing which I miss 
is that pressure at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. When I used to wake up, uh, get ready for a morning test match or get ready for a morning one-day game or a day-night one-day game because I knew that I will be judged right throughout the day. And by the time I get back in the evening, I will either be successful or I'll be a failure. Either, I'll either be a, a star or I'll either be, be thrown away by the selectors. That circle of life, uh, that, that high and that low of life is very, very satisfying. So it's important. I look at it in a different way. So it's very important that when you, when you grow in life, when you, when you teach your children, uh, whether it's in school, whether it's in sport, of, of, of leading life, it's very important to make them understand that everything comes hand in hand and you don't enjoy the other if you don't understand what it's all about. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's important to have pressure. It's important to have pressure. And, uh, and I can bet you with my experiences over 15 years, pressure is something which you get used to it. And after you go through it for, for a couple of years, for three years, four years, it is something which you will start enjoying because your system, your body, your mind gets, gets adapted uh, to the pressures you face in life. And you realize that when it goes away, that, you know, how, how challenging and how happy and how satisfying it was. Thank you. Thank you.